good morning. It's Wednesday the 6th of October 2021 and today I've come to lovely Longna. Longner is a beautiful little Peak District village, situated on a high ridge between Buxton and Hartington. It's a place full of history, with pretty stone houses lining narrow streets. Longner is an ancient place, listed in the Doomsday Book of 1086, but there is evidence of a settlement in the area since around 700 AD. Longner was a major market town in the 18th and 19th centuries. At the heart of the village is a lovely cobbled square with the village store, a popular coffee shop and the 19th century building which was the market hall. Above the entrance is the original market sign displaying the table of tolls payable for buyers and sellers. Just beyond here is a fish and chip shop, a post office and the local pub, the Old Cheshire Cheese Inn. The original church of St Bartholomew was founded in the 13th century, although the present building is more recent, dating from 1781. From the church, I walked back to the high street, which I followed eastwards to head out of the village. Wow, that sun is really bright this morning, it's lovely. Not sure if it's supposed to be sunny all day, but it is at least meant to be dry all day, so we'll see. Okay, well this is a six mile circular walk, starting and ending in Longner. And just to start with, I've got a little bit of road bashing to do. I followed the road towards Crowdercut and Bakewell, dropping downwards where I got the first views of the day over this part of the Upper Dove Valley. After a short distance, I took a footpath off to the right. Oh, blimey, that's not too secure. <laughs> That needs a little bit of TLC. The path continued downwards as it crossed a couple of fields, soon to reach a footbridge over the River Dove. Back at the River Dove, and one leg is in Derbyshire, <laughs> and with the other leg in Staffordshire, <laughs> or more or less. Right, I'm definitely going into Derbyshire now. Ah. Right. 
Right, well, I'm just a little bit further up from where I left the dove last time, which was at Pillsbury. It's just down there, but I'm going this way, so I'm going to be carrying on following the course of the River Dove upstream. I'm now heading into Crowdercut. Reaching the charming little pack horse bridge, dating from 1709, which spans the River Dove, I was in the picturesque hamlet of Crowdercut. It is a small place, but very pretty, and situated in the most stunning scenery. An ancient settlement, it is believed that the name comes from Cruder's Cot, Cruder being a Saxon landowner. Today, the hamlet is made up of a cluster of lovely stone cottages and a warm welcoming pub, appropriately named the Pack Horse. Remember coming to the Pack Horse once, just the once I think, that was quite some years ago. It was on one of my ale minibus trips. It was the the third pub on that particular route at the time, so yeah, I remember enjoying a nice pint of wild swan in there. Yeah. Must come back sometime, as I keep saying about other places I've visited before now. I turned left off the main road along a quiet lane, soon to take a farm track at a footpath sign. Beyond farm buildings, the track headed across fields in a northwesterly direction, keeping more or less parallel with the River Dove to my left. One thing about making these films is, particularly when I'm doing places that I don't normally come to, it does get me out. And I think particularly with lockdown, it's got a lot of people down and the first lockdown particularly where nobody could go anywhere, apart from very, very local. Just getting out filming places is a way of getting me out. It does get me out and I enjoy that. And this walk I'm doing today, is not one I've done very often, but because I thought I'll make a film of it, it's made me come out and do it, so it's great. mud there through that farmyard <laughs> then that's what makes this adventure more exciting isn't it when you go through farmyards expect lots of mud especially when it's pooey mud So once I get home after a day's filming, the first thing I normally do is make sure that all the footage that I've shot during the course of the day is safely backed up. Now all the footage on the camera is stored on an SD card, and those SD cards are amazing. Because bearing in mind, as I think I said on my last walk, that I try and capture 
a minimum of 200 shots for each film. I can normally store enough footage on one SD card for three films, so it's brilliant. So, but yeah, I get home, I then take the SD card out of the camera, the SD card is then placed in the computer, and then I copy all the footage from the SD card onto an external USB drive. And the, the USB drive that I use uh, is two terabytes, so I can get loads and loads and loads of footage on there. It's amazing. Video files are big files, but you can get loads of stuff on those uh, two terabyte hard drives. So once I've copied all the footage from the SD card onto the hard drive, I back it up onto a second hard drive. I just like to make sure that everything's backed up properly. Because once I'm satisfied that all the footage is safely copied onto the two USB hard drives, I can then erase the data or erase the footage off the SD card and reuse it again. So yeah, I can then reuse the SD card for further films. It's great. Okay, so I'm now in Glutton Bridge. Glutton Bridge is a pretty hamlet consisting of a few farms and cottages. It lies on the B5053 between Longner and Buxton and is perhaps best known because of its proximity to the nearby Park House and Chrome Hills. So those are the two hills that I could see in the distance on my last walk. That's Park House Hill, and the one beyond is Chrome Hill. And one day, I'm going to climb both those babies. see a few people coming up and down Park House Hill so yeah I gather it's quite tough so that's gonna be a challenge yep for another day <laughs> and I'll climb Chrome Hill as well one day but for today I'm just gonna walk around the foot of it it's nearly half past one now, so I think I might try and sit somewhere below Chrome Hill and have my lunch. Following the lane that passed between the two hills, I turned left along a track signposted to Hollinscliff. I soon reached the dub again, where I crossed another footbridge, taking me back onto the Staffordshire side of the river. The farm track meandered near the foot of Chrome Hill as I looked for somewhere to stop for lunch. After lunch, I continued along the track, soon meeting a road, which led me into the small but very pretty village of Hollinscliff. This historic village is noted in records dating back to the 1650s. In the 18th century, the village was associated with the silk weaving industry, with silk transported via Packhorse routes out of the village and onto the mills in Macclesfield. 
many of the ancient Packhorse bridges still survive in the area. The chapel was built in 1801 by John Lomas, and its bicentenary was celebrated in Easter 2001. The friendly community chapel hall serves teas during the summer and hosts monthly meetings of the local history group and the local charity Hollinscliffe Action Group. Well, I've not been to Hollinscliffe for quite some years. I think last time I was here was 2013, yeah, so over eight years ago. Yeah, but uh, it's not a place I've been to many times anyway. It's, it's another of those beautiful Peak District villages that's well off the beaten track again. And it's one of those places where you have to make a point of coming here to visit the village. You don't pass through it onto other places. So, yeah, lovely sleepy little village. Don't throw litter on the ground it will destroy the beauty all around. Don't throw it for others to be found, so don't throw litter on the ground. <laughs> the sparkling sun on the trees, the little tiny flowers nod in the breeze. The stream, it trickles on the ground. Listen to its beautiful sound. <laughs> Leaving Holland's Clough, I began to make my way back towards Longner. Wow, what a welcome party I've got. Hello, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> They're thinking, who the flipping heck is this on my land? <laughs> God, hello, hello, hello. Ah. Bit of road bashing now and then. Yeah, it's quite an easy walk back to Longner now. I'm heading back there. And this uh, this road is nice because you've got a nice, it's on a nice ridge. So you can see towards the dove where I've been on that side. And over that side is the River Manifold. Been there before, of course. And I'll, uh, I'll revisit it again soon, hopefully. But yeah, so I'm just heading back to Longner now. Easy part of the walk. <laughs> When the lane curved to the left, there was a footpath off to the right, which I took to head down across a field. Yay! I wondered when I was going to come across a gap style today. I think this is the first one today. First and only one, I think. No, it's not the only one. Two gap stars today, wow. I'm really in my element now, making up for it. And a third, wow. Oh, fantastic. Oh. <laughs> That's three gap stars in on this walk. Ah, oh, three gap stars, could there be a fourth? Well, who knows? There were no more gap stiles, unfortunately. Instead, the path went through a couple of gates to pass farm buildings onto a track, which led me back into Longner.
So it's just after 20 past four. I think I started filming this walk, it was a bit later this morning, it's about 10 o'clock, but there you go, 20 past four, it's taken me just over six hours again. Average day's filming, but it's been a very enjoyable day as always, so yeah. Nice half hour drive home now then. Mm -hmm.